Let's look at t-scores, and then we're going to use t-scores to show how we can calculate uh, normalized weighted averages, or weighted normalized averages. So t-scores are useful because when we look at z-scores, they're usually small decimals, usually between minus 1 and 1, almost always between minus 2 and 2. And those small numbers aren't very useful. We like looking at numbers like on a 0 to 100 scale. So since these scores are always small numbers, sometimes they're transformed into t-scores where the average score is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. Now this is especially used in like evaluations and in educational purposes, lab results, like when you get blood tests. And we can calculate t-scores from z-scores with the formula t equals 50 plus z times 10. So you just take your z-score, times it by 10, and add it to 50, and that will give you a distribution of scores where the, the average score is 50 and with a standard deviation of 10. So for example, if you have a z-score of 1, that converting that to a t-score would be 50 plus 1 times 10 equals 60. A z-score of 0, which means an average, average score, would be a t-score of 50. And a z-score of minus 0.5, somewhat below average, would be 50 minus 0.5 times 10, or 45. So this type of transformation can have a normalized score of a z-score continues to be a bell curve, but the mean changes, in this case to 50, and the standard deviation moves from 1 to 10. Now there's a number of other ways that we uh, uh, transform z-scores also, not just into t-scores. Uh, we mentioned IQ uh, uh, earlier. The IQ score is 100 plus the z-score times 16. Or sometimes, since there's two different formulas for calculating IQs, it could be 100 times uh, z times 15. So if you had an IQ of 116, that would mean uh, you'd be one standard deviation above the norm. You'd have a z of, of 1. Now an SAT type score that usually goes from like a, a 200 to 800 would be 500 plus your z score times 100. So the average score on a scale of the SAT test is 500, and uh, the standard deviation is 100. So if you had an SAT score of 600, that would mean you were one standard deviation above the norm. Now let's talk about normalized weighted averages. Let's uh, suppose that we uh, are working on trying to figure out the best candidate, and we want to show people our calculations, but we don't want to show them a bunch of uh, decimals. So instead of showing them the z-scores, we're going to show them the t-scores. So let me move into Excel here. Okay, and so here we have some data for some candidates, and uh, their raw score, we've got Winnie, Piglet, and Eeyore, and we've got an interview score, a resume score, and a cover score, and Winnie um, got five, and Piglet got four on the interview, Eeyore only got two. With the resume, it was about the same. Winnie and Piglet both got five, and Eeyore got three. And on the cover letter, Winnie got 87, Piglet got 88, and Eeyore got 96, 98. Now, we want to weight these so that the interview and the resume are worth more, and the cover letter is worth the least. So we would expect that since Winnie and Piglet both did better than Eeyore on the interview and resume, that they would have the highest weighted average. But no, when we calculate the weighted average, it turns out that Eeyore has the highest weighted average. And why is that? That's because for the cover letter, the standard deviation is so, so much uh, larger. Here we have some data. For the interview mean, the average score was 4 with a standard deviation of 1.1. For the resume, it was about the same thing. But for the cover letter, it was graded on a different scale. It looks like it was graded on a 0 to 100 score, where the average score was 90, 
with a mean of or with a standard deviation of 15. So because we've got different standard deviations, even when we weight things, things with the greater standard deviation are going to weigh and influence the decision far more than they should. So what we need to do is we need to standardize the scores so that they all have the same standard deviation. So we can do that by converting these scores, these raw scores, into z-scores, and then we'll convert the z-scores into t-scores. So let's calculate the z-score for Winnie. I'll click in there, start an Excel formula, equals, and then I want to do the score minus the mean, so I'll do open parentheses, Winnie score is F5, so I'll type F5 minus, now I want to subtract the, um, the interview mean, which was B12, but I, what should I do for the dollar signs? Well, I want to be able to calculate the, I want to automatically calculate for the resume, which means go down one line to 13, and for the cover letter, down to one line for 14. So I don't want to put a dollar sign in front of 12, but when I calculate for Piglet and Eeyore, I want it to stay on the, uh, the, the B. So I will put dollar B12, so it'll always stay in the B row there, but it won't uh, calc, it, it won't uh, change, uh, uh, but it will change from row 12, 13, and 14, depending on what I want it to be. So I'll close parentheses, and then I will divide by the standard deviation, which is now in D12. And again, I want it always to be the D for the uh, uh, standard deviation column. So I'll do dollar D. But then I want it to vary for uh, whether we're doing the interview, the resume, or the cover letter. So, oops, I don't need to close parentheses there. I just need to press Enter. And that calculates um, uh, the scores uh, for Winnie uh, for his interview, resume, and cover letter. And now if I drag this over here, I can calculate them for Piglet and Eeyore as well. And then I can drag it down here, and I'll get Z, the z-scores for everybody. So now that I've got the z-scores, I can go and I can calculate the t-scores. So now see how everybody, now we can see that uh, Winnie and Piglet scores are much higher for the interview and the resume, whereas the cover letter, there's not too much difference. The standard deviation still going, it's all going to be one, and that way, the cover letter won't outweigh everything else. We'll be able to give the weights that we desire. So over here, we go to Winnie, and we're going to take the, the formula for the T-score is going to be 50 plus 10 times the Z-score. So I'm going to do equals 50 plus 10 star. And I want the, here's the Z-score. And so that's going to be F18, and I want to change that so that corresponds to the Z-score in all of these nine here. So I press Enter, and got a Z-score of 59.09. Now I'm going to grab, um, let's, uh, let's pull that over here and get T-scores for Piglet and Eeyore. And then I can drag this down and get them for everybody and so i've got t scores for everybody and so you can see like oh on the interview it was 59 50 and 31 in the the resume it was 60 60 and 40 and the cover letter is 48 48 and 55 and so we can compare those scores really easy now the total weight here is um one adding those all up that's the subtotal of all of these so we can calculate the weighted average. And so I'm going to use the equation equals sum product. And I'm going to do open parentheses. Now this first array is going to be E25. E20. 
E25 dot dot E27. Whoops, let me do E, E27. And then I'm going to do the second array. Um, if you haven't, if you don't remember the video on weighted averages, be sure to see it so that you can understand what I'm doing here with the sum product. And so we're going to use F25 dot dot F27 comma, and then divide by uh, E28, which is one. I'll just put divide by one. Um, that's not going to change. And we get a score of 57.2 for Pig uh, Winnie. Now let's do the same thing for Piglet. I'm not going to drag it over because uh, well, I guess I could have if I'd put the dollar signs in. But I'll just do it manually here. Uh, equals sum product, open parentheses, E25 dot dot, E27 comma, and now we want to do G25 dot dot G27, close parentheses, divide by 1, and we get a score of 53.7 for Piglet, so Winnie looks like the best candidate there. And then we do equals sum product, and we're going to use the same weights, open parentheses, E25 dot dot E27, comma, now we're going to use Eeyore's column, which is H, H25 dot dot H27, close parentheses, divide by the total weight of 1, and we get 39.8. So with the weighted averages, we see that Winnie has the highest score, the highest T-score of 57.2 versus 53.7 for Piglet, and Eeyore only has 39.8. So we conclude that Winnie is the best candidate. And we'll be able to communicate this information pretty easily to, to somebody because these scores all make intuitive sense since it looks like they're on a 0 to 100 scale.